Hi friends, the other day I took some photos of a Muay Thai class. What is Muay Thai, you ask? I don't know, but they kept hitting and kicking each other, so I assume it's some sort of mating ritual? In the great island of New Guinea, there are 42 different species of Muay Thai. Although nobody ever took their clothes off, so I'm gonna also assume that mating ritual was unsuccessful. She retires to consider her verdict. But I'm feeling a little under the weather today, but you probably can't notice it because I have a heart of steel. And I'm drinking my liquids. So I was working with a company and I needed to take photos of fighters training while wearing one of said company's shirts. So that's how I ended up taking photos of this Muay Thai class. I have never taken photos of any sort of fighting uh, venture before. And it was a really special experience, very challenging. I really enjoyed the challenge. Side note, the uh, expression under the weather Aren't we all sort of under the weather at all times? Seems a bit flawed. So first off, if you're trying to take photos of a Muay Thai class, how do you go about doing such a thing? Well, the way I went about doing such a thing is I just started sending emails out to fighting gyms around here. Somebody got back with me, he said, sure, you can come by and take some photos. I told them I would take some photos for them to share as well. And we were, we were set, we were scheduled. It was in the calendar, it was on the books. It was on, it was in the, it was in the, it's in the, in the, the thing, and there, it was happening. So I showed up, I was very intentional to have thoughtful interactions with the people there. Uh, the people that run the place, the people who were training, and engage with them, get to know them a little bit. I want them to want me to be there. I want them to enjoy me being there, be comfortable with me being there. This is helpful for photography, just but also helpful on a relational level. For example, I went to the, the main coach there and said, tell me about Muay Thai. What, what, what characterizes it? What's important about it? What separates it from Jiu Jitsu, for example? I'm always pleasantly surprised and blown away by how welcoming and accommodating people are if you're, if you're nice to them and if you're welcoming and accommodating to them. I love that dynamic of taking photos with people. The end result of this was I felt like they were happy to have me there. They were comfortable with me there, which is what I always want. So I needed to find people to put these shirts on. The way that I did that was I handpicked the specific people told them exactly what I was doing in great detail and I said, you just do your thing but wear this shirt, I'm gonna take photos of you. I found two willing participants, one of the guys had a, a beard and he was bald and he looks like he could rip your face off if he wanted to, but he was very kind, very cuddly, we, we hugged for most of the interaction. It, it was to the point that it was quite uncomfortable, but I couldn't tell him, hey, don't hug me anymore, because then, you know, he'd put me on, he would turn the hug into a, a, a v, v lock, and I would wake up three years later in Bangladesh without a liver. And I don't want to do that again. There's one photo I was particularly happy with of them training on the punching bags, and what's interesting about it to me is I was able to achieve sort of a symmetry between the two. They both had very similar stances. They were both on uh, opposite sides of the frame. You can see the punching bag on the left going out of frame in a diagonal angle, and you can see another punching bag on the right sort of coming into the frame at, at a similar diagonal angle. It's a very symmetrical, very balanced photo, and I'm happy about that. There's another photo that I was particularly happy with specifically because of the dramatic angle that I was able to achieve. And the way that I achieved this dramatic angle was I stood up on the ring, which ele elevates you quite a bit, and pointed down on them sparring with each other. So like I said, this created a very dramatic angle, but another thing it did was it, it, it was an interesting way to get rid of a lot of the, the clutter of the other people and the things in the background. Not that you can't work those things into a shot and make it nice, but this made the shot feel a bit more minimalistic, which I thought was nice. On to the challenges I faced portion of the video. Number one, I had to deal with a lot of new movements. So I do have experience working with people who are moving very quickly. Uh, skateboarders, for example. I have some experience there. And I, I, you, start to, you start to get an eye and a feel for the dynamics 
that you're going to see and how to shoot within those dynamics in a way that makes a photo make sense. You start to see the, the better points in a given motion, an ollie for example, where the photo will look nice and where problems will arise if you take the photo at the wrong time. Fighting is just the same, it's very fast paced and there are specific moments that tend to work well for a shot. As of right now, I'm still trying to figure out what those moments are. I need to shoot more fighters. One unique problem that you experience with fighting is it's, it's two people fighting each other. So it's very easy to like when one person goes to swing at the other person, they, they do a they do a right hook as they call it in the game, even though I use my left hand there because I'm a southpaw. A lot of times when they're doing their right hook, the other person could be doing some either a, some sort of block or they're they're doing their own right hook or they're kicking. So they're both there's this clash, there's this quick clash of energy and they back off of each other. What this can lead to is just a, a jumbled, messy photo of two people just flailing, which is not always the aesthetic that you may want. Obviously the highest form of a fighting photo is, you know, a clean shot of somebody somebody landing a hook on the cheek and their face, like their teeth are flying out, their brains coming out of their nose, freaking broken eye sockets, twisted nostrils, bonus points if you can get a detached ear flying through the air, that's what you want. So there's a lot of dynamic movement and it's important to sort of think at a thousand frames per second and be very observant of, of what's happening and where the right moments are. Another unique challenge I faced regarding this shoot was I was taking photos of people in a product and in this case I needed to get um, model releases from them to say that we can use the photos to promote the product. So because of this I wanted to keep the non-model released folk out of the background for some of these shots and that was another interesting dynamic. It was restricting in a sense but in a, in a good way, in a, in a fun challenge kind of way. If anything, it just pushed my photos to be uniquely uh, minimalistic and organized in this case. This is a good way to grow yourself, is experiencing these challenges. One of the challenges that I didn't have to face as much as a lot of people may have to is working with people in that type of dynamic situation in a way that sort of allows you to just hover, but also be um, presently friendly be unthreatening and for me that was that's just a lot of smiling and there's a lot of dynamic movements that I'm making around people and uh, I'm, I'm always aware of what people are thinking about me being there in that moment but I've had a lot of experience in that world. It was a pretty interesting lighting situation for me. I learned that in the back corner it was much darker but as you move towards the windows there were a bunch of windows, these like floor to ceiling windows that went all the way across the front of the gym, which was fantastic. Because what you can get in, in gym type photos, is you get these fluorescent lights, which have weird frequencies, which react to the camera, to the photo a lot of times in a way that makes these weird streaks. That's very problematic. They had a lot of natural light that was good lean towards the natural light. I also wanted to get a couple of product shots while I was there. Now I, I don't shine as a product shot photographer but I think I, I can be dangerous and it was fun to use the elements that were there with the product. When you're going into a creative situation like this where you need to think on your feet and there's a lot of variables that are moving around it's important to be limber, nimble, flexible, limbular, nubuli. When things go a little sideways, you have to be able to let those things brush off of you and keep moving forward. It's easy to get stuck on an element of something in your head. Look for a flow state, be present, be engaged with the people around you, and just have a horrible time. Okay, that's it for this one. I would love to hear how you guys have learned to adapt to these types of dynamic creative situations. You have a great day. Uh, bye. Don't make fun of me.